The first key concept in judicial precedent is the idea of ratio and obiter. Now, there's different concepts within judicial precedent, but you've got to make sure that you understand what each concept means, and this can come up in a variety of different questions. So, for example, the most common one is describe the terms ratio and obiter, or the code, if they wanted to um, ask, explain, say, just ratio with an aspect of binding, or ratio with an aspect of avoiding. But as long as you understand what each term means, and always try to remember the DFC structure. So in other words, make sure we've got a definition of the term, um, some other information which we know as features, and the real important thing, um, which you probably remember from last year, is your cases. Right? Generally, per question, per 15 mark question, you're looking at around four cases. So, first of all, the concepts then. The concept of judicial precedent and the concept of star ray decisis only work when they're creating a legal judgment. So, in other words, a judge makes a law, and when they're making that law, they create a ratio and they create a obiter. Right? So, once the case is heard, at the end of every judgment, they'll do a speech. And within that speech, um, they will produce that onto paper, and that'll go in a law report. Now, what you need to understand is that each law report has this at the bottom, right? So, it has a statement of fact, which is basically what the facts of the case are. Statement of law, which is what law is actually used. And the main important bits are the ratio, which is probably a couple of lines long. The obiter, which actually takes up most of the judgment. Um, and then at the end, there'll be the decision, i.e. guilty or not guilty. All right. So out of all them five things, you just need to understand the idea of um, the ratio and the obiter. All right. So, ratio decidendi then. So, the ratio decidendi out of the whole of the judgment is the most important bit, right? So, this is the judge's reason for coming up with the decision. So, in other words, why that person is guilty or why that person is not guilty, right? And this is the important bit because this is the binding aspect, right? So, when we talk about judges following each other's decisions over and over and over again, we're not following the facts, we're not following the different bits of law, we are following the ratio. So the idea and the concept is that for every case, no matter where it's heard, whether it's heard in Newcastle or whether it's heard in London, the same concepts, the same ideas, the ratio will be applied again and again and again to cases where are same or similar facts. Now the ratio can be anything between around about nine lines long, but it could be um, shorter. Right, so remember ratio reason. If we're looking at higher up courts, say for example, uh, Supreme Court or Court of Appeal, uh, there might be more than one ratio. Right, so in other words, maybe for example, all five judges, say for example, in the Court of Appeal, have agreed that that person's guilty or not guilty. So say for example, they've agreed that they're guilty, but They've all come up with maybe slightly different reasons why they believe that person's guilty. So technically, there's five different ratios because they've all got a different reason of why that person is guilty. Now, in relation to the exam, we need your clear definition, um, which obviously is the reason. We then need some features, so anything else you can remember. So this will be this bit. But the main thing is your cases, right? If we just had the definition and anything else you remember, you are massively limiting yourself. Generally, you're looking at maybe four marks out of 15. So the key thing is to make sure that we get the cases, right? Now, Remember, the cases aren't there to annoy you. The cases aren't there for you to waffle, waffle on and tell me every single thing that you know about that case. 
the cases are there to show me what you've just explained. So on your exam paper, you have just explained that what a ratio is. So therefore, these cases, you don't need to waffle on about facts. You need to tell me the reason for that decision, i.e. what the ratio was in each of the cases, right? I expect probably maybe a line, two lines of actual facts, right? Facts get you nowhere. I need to know what the ratio is. So, for example, Don and Stevenson, you could tell me everything about the snail and the ginger beer, but that's irrelevant. What I need to know is what was that ratio in Don and Stevenson. So, a brief line, obviously explaining that a woman found a snail and the ginger beer. Remember, main thing, ratio. So, the ratio of Don and Stevenson was that they'd created this concept of duty of care and that they said that uh, a manufacturer does have a duty of care to their customer, right? And that's all you need, right? You get no more marks for talking about Don and Stevenson in 10 pages as you do three lines, right? Moving on to Hunter versus Canary Wharf then. So with Hunter versus Canary Wharf, it was when they um, erected a building that interfered with people's TV reception. Again, we don't need to go on anymore. What we need to tell me is what is the ratio. So again, the ratio was that it didn't amount to the uh, law on nuisance as it wasn't deliberate. All right. Uh, then in the case of how then, uh, this was uh, concerning duress. So this is where two men uh, threatened another man. Um, and they made it clear in this case that duress was not available for murder. So again, if we look at how this works in application, any other duress murder case that came up after how, the same ratio will be applied again. Yeah, so duress not available for murder, not available for murder. So no matter where you are in the country, that same ratio today is applied exactly the same. And then finally, Brown, again, the case that no one will ever forget. Again, be careful not to talk too much about this. Remember, time is of the essence. So basically explain that obviously Brown uh, was a group of 12 homosexual men who willingly engaged in S&M activity. Remember the key ratio. So the uh, House of Lords turned around and said that the defence of consent was not available for S&M activity. All right, so make it nice and short and sweet. Moving on then to the um, obiter. So with the obiter then, once the judge has given the ratio... And again, remember, that's not going to be that many lines long. They then basically talk about other things or terms that we've mentioned by the way. In other words, everything else they've thought about during that case. So it could be why they made that decision. Um, the different things that they thought of, right? Um, all the different reasons why they came up with that decision. Um, other cases that they looked at, other things that they thought possible but then changed their mind. So a lot of the time it's the waffle, it's the explaining really how they've come up with the decision that they have made. Right. So as it says down there, the judge will explain the ratio and how and why they've reached that decision. Yeah. So we've reached that decision because of this, this and this. Right. Uh, they'll also talk about how uh, they've looked at other cases and how it might be different from other cases. So they might say, right, we looked at this case, however, we decided that it was different from that because of this, this and this, and this is why we made that decision. Uh, there'll be other pieces of law or the cases that they'll look at. Now, with this, anything that they say, their opinions, their thoughts, their feelings about something will only ever be persuasive, right? So remember, persuasive means that it can be followed, but it doesn't have to be. It's entirely up to the judges. And a lot of the time, if they are uh, obiters that are made in big cases in the Supreme Court and the Court of Appeal, a lot of the time, those ideas are later on, maybe a few years later, turned into um, a ratio. Right. 
So again, we've used the same cases just to make it easier. Again, we don't need to keep explaining the facts. What we need to do is tell me what those obiters are, right? So Donahue and Stevenson then. So we know the ratio of Donahue and Stevenson was that they created this idea of duty of care, manufacturer had a duty of care to their customer. In the obiter, which was very long in Donahue and Stevenson, they talked about this idea of the neighbourhood principle. So in other words, they said, actually, it might not just be about manufacturer and customer. There could be loads of different examples of people who have a duty of care. So a doctor and the client, for example, right? And they kind of developed this concept of this neighbourhood principle. Now, remember, that is not um, binding. It's only persuasive. So if there had been a doctor and patient case three years down the line after Donnie and Stevenson, they could have looked at Donnie and Stevenson and thought, mm, that's a good idea, let's take it. Or if they wanted to, they could have completely ignored it. Hunter versus Canary Wharf. So again, we know the ratio was that it didn't amount to nuisance because it wasn't deliberate. What Hunter versus Canary Wharf did in the obiter was state that actually they believed that if it was deliberate, it could amount to nuisance. And again, they also developed this concept of nuisance and gave loads of different examples of what they thought could amount to nuisance. In the case of House or the duress case, again, the House of Lords made it perfectly clear in how that duress was not available for murder. Now, in the obiter, they talked about a lot about why they believed it wasn't available for murder. But one of the key things in Howe's obiter was that they said they believed it shouldn't be available for attempted murder. Now, again, that's their idea. Remember, it's only persuasive. So it could, if they wanted to, again, years down the line, someone could have looked at it and thought, oh, yeah, let's not make it available for attempted murder. But quite easily, the court could have turned around and said, actually, do you know what, we'll ignore us house obiter because we can do. And actually, let's make duress available for attempted murder. Right? Because remember, only ever persuasive. And then the last case, then, the case of Brown. So again, remember with Brown, the, ob uh, the ratio, sorry, it was very, very clear. Ratio was uh, consent is not available for S&M activity. And really what Brown did was basically overhaul the whole area of consent. And in the obiter, they virtually gave a list of things that you could consent to. So they talked about, obviously, surgery, uh, piercings, uh, if you get injuries during football matches all of that you could consent to um, and then obviously they made it clear that you couldn't consent to S&M activity so they just basically cleared and um, clarified what the law on consent was so in the obit they gave examples of things you could consent to and things that you couldn't consent to right so remember DFC structure Right. So if the question says describe the term uh, ratio decedendi and obiter dicta, definition, anything else you can remember, cases. Remember the cases do not need facts. I want you to tell me what the ratio of that case is, what the obiter of that case is. Right? Because it's showing your full understanding of the concept because you're saying, look examiner, not only can I tell you what it's about, but I also can tell you these are the ratios and these are the obiters of these cases. Right? Remember as well, these concepts can come up with other concepts. But again, it shouldn't make any difference of how the question is worded. If you know what that concept is and know the DFC structure, no matter what it comes with, you should be able to answer that question.